This is called a flame liquor engine. Some people call it a vacuum engine or even an atmospheric engine. It's one of the simplest engines ever created. So you have a flame burning near the inlet like this candle here. You need an initial pump to start it and then it sucks in the hot gases from the candle into the chamber. These hot gases then cool down which causes a decrease in pressure inside the piston and so the atmosphere actually pushes on the piston from the outside causing it to shrink in volume. So there's a force from the atmosphere on the piston pushing it back. Then the momentum of the piston expels the cold gas out and then sucks in the hot gas again and continues the cycle. When you watch it working in slow motion, it's no wonder that they call it the flame eater. It literally sucks in the flame and then breathes it out. Each breath that it takes is one pump of the cylinder on the back. So when this flywheel turns, it pushes the piston into the cylinder there. And that opens and closes this valve on the end here. So when the cylinder is all the way in at the lowest volume, the valve is open. But then when the cylinder moves to the back, the valve is closed. Since the atmosphere is actually pushing the piston, these engines are sometimes called atmospheric engines. So I just light this little candle here and give it a spin. Because the engine works from the fact that hot gases cool in the piston, if your piston is too cold to begin with, then the gases cool down too soon and it won't start at all. So before you start, you have to heat up the whole thing. So you have to put the candle under the piston or just really close to it to let it warm up and then it can start. Whoa, it's really going now so fast. The sparks flying out of the end there. In the 1930s, this engine was patented and over 11,000 of them were sold. The manufacturers had big plans for these engines. In a pamphlet that came with the motor, it read, Within a few years, thousands, nay millions of horsepower will be drawn daily from the atmosphere, at negligible cost, by rotors ranging in size from 1 to 10 horsepower. The little model which we're now offering the boys of America bids fair to develop into the greatest labor-saving machine of the 20th century. <laughs> so they definitely thought this engine was going to be very useful. So what happened to it? Why isn't the flame liquor or the flame eater used today? Well, there are a few reasons that may seem obvious once you look at how this works. The first thing is that notice where most of our heat's going. Just up into the air, wasted into the room. Only a small fraction of the heat is actually used to do work. And also, since the work is derived from atmospheric pressure, the maximum pressure delta you can work with is only one atmosphere. In an internal combustion engine, you can get as high as 65 atmospheres in some engines. With only one atmosphere, usually it's only enough to power the motor itself, and they can only drive their own mechanisms, not much more. So they can only get to around 900 RPM. So even though these didn't end up to be very useful engines, they work great in showing how simple an engine can be and also how a piston can work with pressure changes. But out of all of the engines I know, this one definitely has the coolest name, Flame Eater or Flame Liquor. Whoa, <laughs> holy cow. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you learned something today. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, consider subscribing and we'll see you next time.